Before we jump into today's exciting episode, I want to tell you a little bit about Anchor, which is the platform that I use to create this podcast. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free, and there's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor distributes your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more platforms. You can monetize your podcast with no minimum listenership. Everything you need to make a podcast is in one place. So please go to anchor.fm to get started or download the free Anchor app. Well, hello and welcome. This is Alia coming at you and you're listening to What's Wellness, a podcast that focuses on the inquiry into what wellness is on an individual and also collective level. I believe that there are some universal principles to wellness. However, each person has specific needs for what their body requires in order to find optimal balance and physical, emotional, energetic, mental, and spiritual wellness. This podcast episode is all about maintaining your body's optimal health during a time of crisis right now with a global pandemic and also leveling up your immune system. These principles for maintaining and up-leveling your body's immune system functions are principles that you can incorporate and apply no matter the season. I want to give you some tools today to incorporate into your daily routine that you can use to maximize your body's potential and improve your immune system. Use these suggestions, especially if your body is taxed or your systems feel compromised with all the stress and anxiety in our lives today. In today's episode, I'll talk to you about what it is that I do to stay healthy, especially during this time of year with flu season or right now with the highly contagious COVID-19. These suggestions are from my personal experience, but please keep in mind, I'm not a doctor. I'm someone with a compromised system due to previous health challenges, and it's important that I do what I can to keep my body functioning at its maximum potential so that I don't come down with anything. I also want to mention, as I did in the last episode, that it is our responsibility, even if you feel fantastic, that you limit the potential of exposing others as you may be contagious even without any symptoms. So follow the guidelines that are in place and continue to social distance for the time being. Despite being physically apart, let this bring us closer together. Stay with me for a moment and I'll be right back with the tips to maximize your immune system and your wellness. First things first, I'd like to thank you for tuning in today. If this is the first time you're listening to What's Wellness, Welcome, thank you for finding me here. And if you've been tuning in, you've been along for the ride, hello, how are you? Hope all is well, and thank you so much for continuing on this adventure with me. I got some comments and messages last week from my episode about the transition from two yogis in a pod to what's wellness. And I just want to thank you for your support as I continue to run with this podcast and give it everything I have. I have a lot of experience in my whole life with regards to finding balance and cultivating wellness from the physical level, yes, which for me is an ongoing process, to the aspects of wellness that transcend the physical. What I mean is wellness is a holistic term. It goes beyond the physical functions, and dives into the depth of your emotional state, your energetic balance, your mental health, and also from a spiritual standpoint, how connected you feel with source energy, with a higher power, with God or the divine or the universe, however spirituality resonates for you. So physical health, of course, 
that's important, but also looking at wellness from the mental, spiritual, emotional, and energetic standpoints, as these all tie into the whole. For me, physical health has been quite a journey, and it started when I was six years old. It's one of my earliest memories because I became extremely ill out of the blue. It was very unexpected and a time when I got worse and worse to the point where doctors had no idea what was wrong with me. It took several specialists to figure out that my left lung had collapsed without reasonable explanation. No one could really figure out why my lung would collapse. But in the meantime, I was so sick to the point where my parents thought they may lose me, that I may never recover or survive. Being so sick took a real big toll on my little physical body. As a full-grown adult, I'm in my 30s, I'm barely five feet tall, so as a tiny little kid, I'm sure it was very scary for my family, my parents especially, to see me just getting worse and worse, so sick. I was going to need to have surgery, and two days before the operation was scheduled, I wound up falling out of bed, which I had never really done as a child. It was kind of a fluke thing. And that morning when my parents took my brother and I out for our favorite breakfast place, the Flapjack Shack, <laughs> we lived in Michigan, it was the middle of winter, and at breakfast I had a coughing spell. I started coughing and coughing without any real reason, and I wasn't choking, I just had an attack, and I wound up coughing up a wad of chewing gum. It was surrounded, covered in mucus, and my parents, I'll never forget the look on their faces when they saw this happen. In fact, we now look back and believe that my angels pushed me out of bed and it dislodged the gum that was stuck in my lung. It dawned on me that I may not have to have surgery now, and it was a long road to recovery. It wasn't like the next day I was 100%. There were all kinds of breathing treatments, antibiotics, and more tests that needed to be done. In fact, at first, the surgeon still wanted to operate and make sure there were no pieces of the gum left in my lung. But eventually, I started to get better and feel stronger. And over the course of several months, I was able to heal from that very scary experience. There were definitely some ramifications from the treatments that I underwent. I remember having terrible rashes break out all over my skin that were really itchy and uncomfortable from the medications and the breathing treatments that I was on. And I also started having some digestive problems, I believe, from the antibiotics. So for years when I was younger, also anytime I would catch a bug, I'd wind up with bronchitis and with a bunch of challenges in my lungs. This was my first memory of being unwell, of not having my health, and ever since then, it's been a really long road, quite the journey. I've had a number of different accidents and illnesses that have set me back, and at times I continue to regress and have challenges, but I stay determined, putting one foot in front of the other. I've learned so much along the way, and I'm really excited to share parts of my story, my journey, and more importantly, what I've learned with you here. So one of the things that I've been doing, especially during the flu season or when the common cold is going around, I gargle with warm salt water. I'll explain briefly how I do this. I'll warm up water in my tea kettle, and I add about a quarter teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt. You can always add a little bit more or less as needed, and I use about a quarter cup of warm water. I'll let the cup of water with the salt sit on the counter for a good five minutes. One, the theory is that the molecules of the water absorb the amazing minerals from the salt. But two, it's also good to let the water sit for a few in case the water is too hot. Then I take a small sip and tilt my head back. I gargle for a count of 10. And then I'll spit, of course. I'll do this about eight or 10 times or until the cup is empty. And this really helps to rid your body of anything that you could have picked up along your day. I like to do this in the morning and in the evening or at least once a day in the evening. 
Another thing that I do, especially in cooler weather, now I know it's starting to be springtime and temperatures are slowly rising, but on a chilly day or especially if it's windy and cold out in the fall or the winter seasons, I wear a scarf around my neck to keep my throat warm. I find that if my neck and throat get cold, I tend to get more dryness, more tickling in my throat, and I'll be more susceptible to a sore throat and things like that. So on cooler days and when it's particularly windy out, keep your neck and throat warm with a scarf. I use an infinity scarf, and it really makes a huge difference for me. I'll even wear it out on walks or jogs around town. And I notice that when my throat stays warm, my entire body stays warm and I feel much better. Next, I incorporate superfoods into my everyday routine. I use superfood mushrooms in my coffee and in my tea. I also sprinkle them in my food and baked goods. Be mindful, some of them have quite an earthy taste, so smell what you're using and determine how much you'll need in order to get the full benefits, but not disrupt too much the flavor of what it is that you're making. I love to use chaga, reishi, lion's mane, turkey tail, cordyceps, maitake. There's so many amazing medicinal and superfood mushrooms that can benefit not only your immune system, but your energy, even digestion and mood. I also love to use superfoods by The Philosophy. That's a company that's owned by a woman based in LA. And I use her cacao superfood pr protein powder every day. Here's my recipe for soup. <laughs> recipe for superfood coffee. In a blender or a milk foamer, I combine coconut milk or the variation of your choice with cacao magic. That's a superfood protein powder. Superfood mushrooms like maitake and cordyceps and coconut oil or MCT oil. Combining all of these with the antioxidants you get from well-sourced coffee makes a delicious and healthy morning beverage, almost like a mocha. And I wake up looking forward to it. I'll link those two companies in the show notes in case you're interested in looking further into those superfoods that I recommend for your everyday use. If you have any questions about their usage, send me a note either on Instagram at Tandem Surf Yogini or email me directly, alia at aliayoga.com, spelled A-H-L-I-A. My next tip and suggestion is to keep your body moving. Do what feels good for you and get outside a little bit every day. Enjoy the fresh air around you as it's such a beautiful time of year. It's springtime. You get to see what's blooming and nature coming back to life after a long winter. If you need some inspiration for how to move your body, search for Alia Yoga on YouTube. I've been putting up a couple of new flows every week, and I also have up some guided meditations on that channel. Last but not least, stay hydrated and be mindful of how you fuel your body right now. One simple thing you can do is increase the amount of vegetables you're consuming. Use riced cauliflower or riced broccoli in your eggs in the morning or chopped zucchini. Add power greens or a scoop of spirulina to your smoothies. Even if it's challenging to eat super clean right now, simply adding more vegetables is going to help keep your system strong and healthy. If you do, check out Alia Yoga on YouTube. It's incredibly helpful for me if you subscribe to that channel and also to this podcast. I'll thank you in advance. If there was anything that resonated with you today, take a screenshot and share it on your Facebook or on Instagram. Tag me at Tandem Surf Yogini. And if you have any questions about what's wellness or if there's a topic that you'd like me to research or share from my own experience, or perhaps you're someone who would like to come on this show and be interviewed and share what wellness is to you, send me a note. Again, my email, alia at aliayoga.com. I hope you're staying well and feeling all right during these uncomfortable and uncertain times. I'm sending you all waves of love and positive energy, compassion and peacefulness from my heart to yours. And if I can support you in any way, please let me know. I'll be going live for Sunshine Yoga. It's my online virtual 
live yoga class on Wednesdays, 4.30 Pacific Standard Time. If you would like a flow design based on what your body needs right now, let me know. I'd love to create a sequence just for you. And I hope you'll listen again next week on Thursday. New episodes coming out to you every week where I'll be talking about the importance of mental health and how to focus your awareness on staying positive and productive. Also, how mental and spiritual health contributes to your overall well-being. I'm grateful for the opportunity to connect in this way. I'm sending you all my love and I'll be back next week. 